we discovered the first biological communities around hydrothermal vents in the Southern Ocean. We located the vents first um, uh, on one trip and then went back with a robot on a second trip and actually surveyed those sites. Each voyage is about two months long and because the ship time is so expensive, um, we work the ship 24 hours a day. It felt like being at, at a football match almost. There was that level of excitement when we were seeing these vents for the very first time. No one else has actually seen them. So we were expecting to see certain groups of animals like hydrothermal vent shrimps and tube worms and so on at these vents. We didn't see those, we saw a completely different fauna. Literally thousands of these Yeti crabs per square metre in heaps around some of these vents. Hydrothermal vents were discovered um, near the Galapagos Islands in 1977. And they're places where um, hot water gouts out of the seabed. So this hot water also contains chemicals like uh, methane and hydrogen sulfide. And bacteria can actually use those chemicals as a source of energy. So um, this is a very unusual ecosystem in that it's not powered by sunlight as almost every other ecosystem on Earth is. The discovery of hydrothermal vents really kicked off the science of astrobiology. And it's quite interesting that, for example, NASA are funding the development of some of the forms of technology that we actually use for deep submergence research. A lot of my work involves you know, just straightforward deep sea ecology and deep sea science but we also engage heavily in work on marine policy. So the excitement of working in Oxford is that um, we have people from many fields here, deep water ecology and biology with people working in policy and law and so on, really allows us to um, make some significant statements about the way we actually manage the oceans. On my mother's side, um, my grandfather, uncles, great-grandfather were all fishermen on the west coast of Ireland. So, yeah, I guess there's some sense of poacher turned gamekeeper, <laughs> really, if you look over generations. Um, but uh, I, I think, uh, you know, actually having uh, grown up working with uh, fishers, I, I do appreciate and understand that we do have to get fish from the ocean to feed people. Um, there is a need to... Uh, exploit the resources of the oceans for humankind, particularly on a planet uh, with an ever-increasing population. But the, um, the thing is we've got to balance that need with the need to make sure those resources are there uh, for future generations. <laughs>